On this week's show, we hit the diamond as Liberty Baseball and Softball take on ACC foes, and men's tennis is heating up on the court. We'll hear from one of their standouts. Plus, the Swim Sisters, a feature on why the Liberty Swim team is taking family to a whole nother level. Flame Central starts now. From the diamond to the court to the pool, we have Liberty Athletics covered from all angles this week. Welcome on into Flame Central alongside Emily Austin. I'm Matt Warner. I know. I haven't done a show with you, you in a not. while. The band, though, is back we together, are. and we have some interesting stories to share with you this week. But we start with a couple of huge matchups on campus as the Flames squared off with a pair of ACC foes. Yeah, let's start with baseball. It's been a roller coaster ride to this point of the season. This past weekend, a great example of that. The Flames were no hit in one game. The next day scored 25 runs. Anything seems possible with this squad, but would that include a win over number 12 Wake Forest on Tuesday? The Demon Deacons swept the series with LU a season ago. It was a season that would end in Omaha. Not quite the same talent this year, but still plenty good. Wake would take a 2-1 lead after scoring twice in the third inning of this one. The Flames would then tie it up thanks to a pass ball in the fourth. Thank you very much. It was still tied in the seventh, the score 3-3 but some miscues would open the door for the Demon Deacons. An error with the bases loaded, followed by a walk, would start the scoring, and Wake Forest would go on to score four times in the inning to go up 7-3. But this one not over just yet. An RBI double for Todd Hudson in the seventh would make it 7-4. Then in the eighth, it was Wake Forest with some miscues. Two bases loaded walks had the Flames within a run. But Liberty was unable to get the big hit they needed. The Flames drop a tight one to number 12 Wake Forest by the final of 7-6. to six. Well, just across the street, Liberty Softball also played host to an ACC opponent taking on Virginia. The Lady Flames upset number 21 Charlotte in their last non-conference matchup and hope to have the same result Tuesday night. This one started a little later thanks to a steady rainfall, but after an hour and 17 minute delay, let's play some ball. UVA didn't waste much time once it got going first inning. Bella Cabral sends it down the left field line. That brings home Jade Hilton. It's 1-0 Lady Cavaliers. A couple batters later, Macy Eaton follows suit and tells Cabral, hey, let's trade places. Good for another RBI double to left. UVA now leading 2 nothing, but LU will respond in the second. Rachel Crane gets one to drop in shallow right field. That plates Keiki Madre, and we have a one-run ball game to the fifth. UVA looking for an insurance run, and Abby Weaver provides with the sack fly. The throw not in time. The Lady Flames left a season-high 11 runners on base as UVA escapes with a 3-1 victory. All right, we're starting to tennis now, where the Liberty men have been putting together a solid season. They began the week ranked just outside the top 50, and they'd have a chance to move up as their matchup on Wednesday was against number 45 FAU. And wouldn't you know it, the Flames continue to roll. They win this one 4-3. They were actually dominating this match up 4-1 before surrendering the final two matches. It's the fifth straight win for the Flames as their impressive season continues. By now, you probably know the drill. If you're a big deal, you're coming on the Flame Central podcast powered by Alcova Mortgage. Men's tennis player Deji Thomas-Smith is the real deal and the latest athlete to join the show. He's won 10 straight singles matches with the Flames, but becoming a better tennis player isn't the only area of growth he's experienced during his time at Liberty. What has Liberty meant to you through those five years, and how are things different from maybe this is what you pictured when you got here? to this is what it actually is after being here for such a long time. One of the big things is coming to college, I was having the idea of, okay, it's gonna be a stepping stone in my career to go pro mm -hmm. afterwards. And this, like, let's go through this, develop what I need to develop, and then go out. Whereas going, going through it now, I see what I've been able to learn is putting like the team above myself. Mm -hmm. When you're a junior growing up, playing until you're 18 years old, it's all about you, it's all about yourself. Whereas here, you win, you, you don't go anywhere, you stay, you support your guys. Yeah. You lose, there's no time to hang your head. You go, you support your guys in their matches. That's been, that's been like something special, a lot of, a lot of growth. I felt a lot of growth in, nice. uh, in my so time cool. here. 
What a guy. I mean, who wouldn't want Deji to be his or her teammate? If you want to hear more from Matt and Joe's conversation with him and to find out the surprise guest who made an appearance on this week's podcast, you have to check out the Flame Central podcast. It's powered by Alcova Mortgage. We drop a new entertaining episode each and every Monday. Find it where you listen to your favorite podcasts or watch it on the Liberty Flames YouTube channel. All right, let's go to the pool. Liberty Swimming and Diving is enjoying its best run of success in the program's young history. Six straight conference titles and athletes qualifying for nationals. This is a program that's on the rise. And with four sets of sisters competing on the team, you might say that the family that swims together wins together. Liberty University Athletics prides itself on building a family-like culture. However, one program has taken this family environment to the next level. Um, Ella and I have always been really close ever since we grew up. I don't know, we like doing karaoke parties together, like just the two of us, it's kind of our thing. <laughs> Lately, Grace has been really into Fortnite. Oh yes, so I've been, so Abby likes watching me squad up. Your sister's your best friend and friends come and go, but your sister will always be there. So it's just so special to, to have her. I don't know if they keep records for such things, but I would have to imagine that four sets of sisters on one team at one time has to be some type of record. I don't know, it's super special to have like my sister in the sport with me. Like, I mean, we swim like pretty much the same events. And so we're always training together. We're always racing together. And so I feel like we kind of push each other to be better athletes and better sisters. We, we are polar opposites when it comes to the pool. So she's distance and I'm sprint. It's probably better for the entire team that we're not together because we are so competitive. For her mental health, it's probably good we're not in the same group as well. We've been training together since we could like walk basically so it's so nice just having like that constant kind of safe person that when you don't have a good race or when you do have a good race like they support you no matter what and it's just yeah it's so awesome to train beside her at the d1 level now training together at the d1 level has led to a culture of trust and encouragement on liberty's swimming and diving team and it's not just between the sisters. It's just very fun to have all these sisters here. And I feel like, honestly, everyone on the team has just become family at this point. You know, we train together twice a day, every single day. You get really close with your team. And so it's really cool to just have that support system and to have that many people cheering you on all the time. It's just really encouraging and it's an awesome environment to be in for sure. It just really means so much to me that I have 37 other girls who have my back and I have theirs and just knowing that we're surrounded by people who actually care for us means everything. If younger sisters didn't see how happy the older sisters were, you wouldn't keep getting sisters to come join the team. It would kind of leave the family, but it always, there's a pattern where it kind of stays in the family. One sister comes, another follows. I've always had Shelby as my support system. She's been just She's been the best big sister, just the biggest supporter, biggest protector. And then coming here, having 37 more girls who are willing to do the same thing, to support you, to guide you, to help be there for you is something that I don't think many other programs can genuinely say they have. And that, I think that makes our program very special. Thanks to our Josh Quigg for producing that yeah. great piece. My favorite part about this was if the big sister is happy, the little sister will follow. What a great recruiting tool. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think Jake Schellenberger, like that's his goal in recruiting. Like I'm going to recruit all these families, but it is cool how that works out. If the one sister's happy and feels like she's in a place where she's supported and able to thrive, like why wouldn't you invite your younger sibling to come be a part of it? Just so happens they're all really good as well. <laughs> it's worked out nicely for Liberty Swimming and Diving. Yeah, a true family environment. Well, we wanted to share some news about one of the swim sisters you just met earlier this week. Grace Shaw shared that she was diagnosed with stage three Hodgkin's lymphoma. While the news was a shock to Grace and all of us, she said, quote, I am confident this is just a chapter in my life, not the whole story. I'm at peace in knowing that this was no surprise to God and he will give me the strength that will help me overcome this. We know the power of prayer, so we hope you will join us as we all come together to pray for Grace during this time and to Grace, please know that we will be your biggest fans throughout your fight. All right, we need to take a time out. But coming up, Sage Steele shares her story on why it was important to stand up for what she believes. Plus, Rhett McGiven joins the show to name his top athletes of the week. It's warm, hot, and fuego when Flame Central returns.
Where you train is where you learn how to say, I know this, I've done this, I've got this, I'm ready. So you can surpass expectations when they say you're hired. At Liberty University, you'll train in world-class facilities as you prepare for a world-class career. you're looking for a university that's perfect for you. A school that has anything you could possibly need. Anything? You want a place that has the programs you want to study. And maybe a few more, just in case you change your mind. I think I'm going to sign up for the fashion design program. All right. A place with state-of-the-art facilities. I mean, look at this campus. And who doesn't love big town sports? It's great recreational activity. Okay, now we're on a roll. Somewhere you can hike, slide, strike, shoot, climb, eat, and most importantly, eat. You want a place that takes you to space? Okay, maybe not, but we can teach you how to fly, or pastor a church, or run a business. And all that with a great view? Yeah, I think I know a place. Welcome back to Flame Central. There are very few people in this world, especially women, who are brave enough to speak up for what they believe, for what they deserve, and simply for what's right. Sage Steele is one of those women. Her impact goes far beyond the sports world. During her recent visit to Liberty, Matt Warner had the privilege to sit down with her and learn more about her courageous journey from brokenness to boldness. Well, Sage Steele, thanks so much for visiting us here at Liberty. We really appreciate it. Your story has gotten so much attention the past few years. Yeah. For people that don't know, you're in your dream job at ESPN. You make some personal comments that they didn't necessarily agree with, including about the vaccine mandate. That ended up leading to suspension, eventually the end of your time there. For a lot of people, I don't think they would have been willing to stand up for their beliefs when their job was on the line. Where did you get the strength to do that through it all? Mm, such a... <laughs> Deep question. Good job. <laughs> yeah, Good thanks. start. Oh Sorry my gosh. Well. Yeah, really. I've said this several times in the past few months. I didn't know that a line was crossed until after it was crossed mm. and that I realized, oh goodness, I can't let this one go. Because I'd let a lot of things go through the years and you just, you know, you do the safe thing, you stay quiet. And sometimes that's definitely the best sure. thing. Um, but because of the change that took place in our country, especially COVID and George Floyd, like that whole time in early to mid 2020, a lot of things changed. A lot of people were able to speak up. Um, but what I found is that it, it's only if you followed a certain narrative. Um, and I just realized that, you know, part of it's an age thing too, and just experience and maybe wisdom that comes with age yeah. and not through anything in particular that I did. Um, and I just knew that like, gosh, if I'm preaching to my kids um, and young people that I speak with to be yourself and stand tall and be true and don't be afraid, and then I'm gonna be quiet and be fearful, I'm a hypocrite. So I, uh, it took being broken though. It took being canceled and threatened and embarrassed. So I just, I prayed, I did. I talked to my people who are my parents and a couple of close friends. I didn't even have an agent at that time anymore. I had to let go of that relationship because they didn't support me either. And I prayed and I just knew God had always protected me even when I didn't think I deserved it. So I believe that he wasn't gonna stop taking care of me at this moment and he didn't. Listen, I still have to deal with it. I probably need a lot more therapy and, <laughs> and I haven't had any yet yeah. to this extent. Yeah. I need it, but I, 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 I'm beginning with my faith and my conversations with God and just saying, lead me to the next thing. I don't know what it is. Professionally I do, um, but like in everyday life, I don't know. And for the first time I'm okay, I'm trusting. Yeah, well we remember you know, you at ESPN, right? You were everywhere, Sports Center, NBA Finals, the Masters, and people I think would, would look at that and say, 
well, your platform will never be bigger, your impact will never be greater, but then I look at you today, speaking to thousands of students at Liberty's Convocation, and your impact is way broader now than it ever was before. Do you feel that? Did you ever think that you would be able to say that? No. It's so humbling, and I, I get a little tight when you say that, and I've heard <laughs> that a lot recently because I feel like I never, it's emotional, I never wanted to be famous. Like that was never my goal. It was just to, to tell stories and to be around greatness and to learn how, how can I be great at whatever I'm doing by being around these athletes and coaches. I, I thought I made it. Like I was done. Yeah. I was content. I had my babies. I had my job. Like um, I have a, a good friend of mine, Matt Berry, who is my last co-host on Sports Center, who is the funniest, most talented human being ever. Our stories and commercial breaks are some of my favorite memories I can never say publicly. <laughs> and he said to me during the battle, because he was a trooper, because he had to take some shrapnel just because he was my co-host, yeah. which is not fair. That's how ugly mm. people at the network are and on the outside too but there and so um he's like you don't understand girlfriend you're going to be like this is a blip what you've done at espn and i'm like what but i now feel it because i'm talking about things that are so much more important than sports with sports ties obviously when you look at like the women female sports transgender sports issue oh my goodness this is this is so impactful and so crucial at this moment to stand up and have frank discussions and we're not excluding anybody but we're not going to erase 50 years of progress for women i'm not letting that happen um i would never been able to say that had i stayed everyone said you're so stupid you have the job you're the face the, one of the faces of the network you're making all this money or da, da 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 and you're gonna throw that away to me it wasn't about throwing it away it's about standing up for what you believe in and then along the way others too and i felt like if you do that yeah. And you're true to who you are and doing choosing the harder right yeah. um it's gonna work out and i figured okay if it doesn't and i'm homeless my parents have a nice basement <laughs> i'll bring the dog let's you're go safe. like yeah. i'm not gonna die and that's where i got to but that wouldn't have i couldn't have done this 10 years ago mm. maybe even five years ago it took being beaten up a little bit and canceled and canceled and then still being alive the next morning to realize i'm gonna be okay we talked about the tough times for you professionally but what now brings you the mo most joy in what you do? What's most the most rewarding part about what you're doing now? Literally being able to come and meet people like you and meet these students and get to talk and have conversations and to tell them um, you're going to hit some tough times no matter what career you're in. You are. And you're going to have choices to make. Um, I love being able to share my story because I just hope that by doing so, others are better than me and aren't as afraid for as long as I was. There's so many blessings that have come from the fear that paralyzed me for years and the fear of standing up and filing a lawsuit, which I'm like, how many people file a lawsuit against their company and then still go to work every day? Yeah. And mine was on national TV every day as the face of the company that I was doing. So, oh my gosh, I pushed through all that with the hatred and the fear. So now it's like, I'm, I'm not afraid to try anything. I'm not afraid to stand up for people who are afraid to. Um, and that is such a, like I finally know, along with being a mother, I feel like I finally know why God has me on this earth. And it's so cool. It took me a long time. But like, I know now that he realizes he gave me a, a big mouth and a big heart and to try to use it the right way while I can. I don't know what tomorrow is. Why not be here? So go hard no regrets no more regrets well we're excited about what you're doing excited about the difference that you're making certainly making the difference speaking to so many liberty students here today sage we appreciate you taking thank some you time. thank you for having me all right we make the turn now to warm hot and fuego rep mcgiven is here hey. as always top yeah. play player moment from the past week in liberty athletics Rhett, what were we working with this week? A lot of great performances there was. recently. I was really impressed softball. Yeah. Had not seen her pitch yet at home or this season. 
Elena Escobar. Yes. Coming off a bit of a hand injury, but looking solid. This young lady taking on UVA. UVA, a really good team. They just came off of taking two of three from Clemson, wow. who is top 15 in the nation, right? Clemson, their bats get going. But Elena Escobar coming into this one, six Ks. Her velo is up around 67 miles per hour. Okay. One of the fastest velos on the Liberty roster. You can see her here just dishing out some Ks left, right, and center. Real good. Uh, Truthfully, you know, it's kind of those coulda, woulda, shouldas. Liberty right. should have won this game and error kind of got to them. They had seven hits. They out hit UVA yeah. seven to three. Probably should have taken it, but still a great performance by her. And looking at her and then the rest of the, you know, the roster here for LU, the pitching staff, really like where they're at. I think that Escobar with a little bit more yeah, routine in this yeah. and getting into the, the lineup regularly, she could be the ace on this staff. Wow, okay. Yeah. That's, that's good news with those young guns they For are. For sure. Yeah. All right, from warm we go to hot. Who's oh, your pick? We go to men's tennis, and you were just talking yeah. about them earlier. You know, trying to get into the top 50. They're on the outside right now, taking on an FAU team that was 45. They knocked them off. And you mentioned they were up 4-1 at one point in this. Mm -hmm. They're just doing some great stuff. But here's some of the teams that they've beaten so far this year. JMU, yeah. Penn State. Georgia State. Then when you look in the top 50, Charlotte, yeah. ODU, FAU, Marquez Da Silva, been a big part of that. He is the CUSA Athlete of the Week back to back now. He's been that in the number one spot, crucial in wins over Richmond and William and Mary. So this guy doing great work and men's tennis as a whole, love where they're at currently. Yeah, heading the right direction, peaking as they're yes. getting close now to the co that conference tournament. Yeah. All right, finally, Red and Fuego this week, who you got? All right, it sounds like a law firm, but it's Coleman and Kimes, a couple Coleman. of throwers here yeah. on yeah. track and field. These guys, uh, I'm, okay, Desmond Coleman, let me start yeah. off with here. Field athlete of the week. All right, he does the discus, a personal best of 194 feet, four inches. That's fifth nationally. Top wow. in Conference USA by 10 feet. You know what that says? Everybody else out there, put in your red shirt right now. <laughs> the season's over. Yeah. Then you got Kellen Kimes, freshman of the week. He does the hammer, personal best, 198 feet, one inch. That's 61st nationally, second in Conference USA for a freshman. These two guys rocking it. Yeah. And then Coleman, too, is only a sophomore. You got a couple of young studs. Yeah. They're going to rock it the rest of the way. Injured on the job? Call Coleman and Kyle. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, Great yeah. job, as always. Hey, still to come, it's story time. As one Liberty legend shares about a game he'll never forget. That's when Flame Central returns. Welcome to Liberty University's online programs, where living out your calling with integrity is what you train to do. And getting ready for the future doesn't mean missing out on the now. Because a university is more than buildings and books, and an education should set you free, not fence you in. Welcome to Liberty's global campus, where distance learning was pioneered and evolved into one of the top-ranked schools in the nation. Where protecting your budget, your time, and your education isn't just a theory, it's our priority. Here, degrees in your field reflect industry demands and help you get ahead of the competition. Where college comes to you, but you can come to college too. Game day, homecoming, graduation day. Your school, your values, your experience, your choice. Welcome to Liberty University, where we train champions for Christ. At Liberty University, we understand life can be unpredictable. And when you need a resilient career, your education should withstand any test. So we've made sure the degree you need is within reach by freezing one of the lowest tuition rates in the nation for eight years and counting and giving scholarships, discounts, and credit for work you've already done. Because we're proud of what you do. We've done this for over 30 years and we know how to help. We're here to help you. God's calling for your life can be specific. And at Liberty, we are committed to equipping you to pursue that calling. Choose from more than 350 unique programs of study, or design your own major through interdisciplinary studies, and be confident your major is the perfect fit. No matter how specific your calling, you'll find a program of study to match at Liberty University and become your best as a champion for Christ.
Hey, welcome back to the show. With Liberty Baseball facing a top 15 team earlier this week, it got us to thinking about a great old story of another time LU faced a highly ranked opponent. And it's hard to find a better storyteller than Chip Smith. Mm. This one comes from the diamond, and trust me, Matt, it's a gem. Hi, I'm Chip Smith, LU Hall of Famer 2010, and boy, do I have a story for you. This is a great Liberty story from the early years. So I was very fortunate, uh, blessed and fortunate to play four years of football and four years of baseball. And I played on the very first football team, the very first baseball team. So our second year, uh, we actually played the University of South Carolina in Columbia. We played them in a double hitter. We went down there and I mean, they beat the brakes off of us. I mean, I can't remember. It was like 18 to two or something ridiculous in the second game. It was ridiculous. So my senior year, uh, which was in 1976. We'd only been playing for, uh, it was actually the fourth year of the program. We played University of South Carolina in Lynchburg, Virginia at City Stadium. And they were ranked at the time, they were ranked number two in the nation. And they went on to play in the College World Series. And so they came into Lynchburg and of course, you know, everybody thought that they were gonna just wear us out. And that game was incredible. We won that game 13 to six uh, there in Lynchburg. And I can remember after the game, Coach uh, Bobby Richardson, who was a head coach at South Carolina, came to our dugout and he said, fellas, uh, you know, I'm, I want to congratulate you for a great win. And certainly, I think the greatest win in Liberty sport, sports history that's never talked about, you know, a, a four-year program that beats the number two team in the nation. I was blessed to have scored the first run of that game and I scored the 13th run of that game. So I remember what, like it was yesterday and I had great teammates and we just had a great game, played a complete game and uh, they were shocked that uh, these old Christian boys from uh, LBC uh, put a whipping on them. So uh, proud to be a part of that LU history. Love those old stories. Mm -hmm. Great to hear from Chip Smith. All right, we're about out of time. As always, check out our website, a new website, libertyflamecentral.com. You're going to want to read Matt's bio. And hey, yes. download and subscribe to the Flame Central podcast powered by Alcova Mortgage. We'll see you right back here next week. For Matt, I'm Emily. See you next time.